What we wanted to do was think about the world beyond the museum and how design can help us learn and think about how we live today, the here and now. The intention with rapid response collecting is to think about the designed world, but also the world in which we live and its social, political, economic and technological change. There's a huge range of objects that we collect for this gallery, all though with their roots in existing V&A collections. So there are fashion objects like the Louboutin shoes or like the bikini. There are objects of technology and industrial design, like the handlebars or 3D printed gun. You know, all of these kinds of objects have their roots in what the V&A already collects, but flips that into, into a new kind of social context for design. Two thousand and sixteen was the first year that the Olympic Games recognised the refugee nation as a participant in the games, and the flag and an anthem were created to give that nation an identity, a nation that's dispersed across the globe and has many different nationalities within it. It's in a way an attempt to say that through design we can create an identity for a people that might be otherwise invisible. I had to make the same journey as anyone who he wants to keep his life, he wants to keep uh, himself sane. <laughs> I went from Turkey to Greece on a boat. First thing I thought about actually, I did some research about flags and how do you design a flag. At the same time, working with students and very nice people in Amsterdam, to recycle the life vests. It's such a big shock to see this numbers of life vests lying there, one million, that's one million people in one year. So I thought, yes, let's make it orange and black and let's support these, uh, let's remember these life vests and these souls and those people in a very good and strong and positive way. Let's turn something that's really scary abstract and beautiful. Mon Mon is cute, he's designed to be so. This is a WeChat enabled soft toy that's marketed to parents, often young families in China, as a means for parent and child to communicate when they're not in the same place. Often children are left with their grandparents or other family members while their parents are going out to work or indeed might be working remotely. You squeeze the tummy and you hear your parents say, good night, sleep well, sweet dreams. You have a new news. Hey, hello. It's a digital object that's teaching and engaging with children from a very early age, which is the most sophisticated and leading example of the way increasingly our lives are communicated, negotiated, organised via the digital world. A House of Essex is a collaboration between myself and my former architecture practice, FAP, and artist Grayson Perry. It's a house that you can go and stay in, but it's also a kind of artwork which is about a fictional Essex woman called Julie Cope. And so it's sort of a shrine to her life that you can go and experience. Describing the house is quite difficult because it's quite an extraordinary thing. Um, it sits in a very remote location that overlooks this sort of estuary. 
And one of the things about the house, it's a sort of end of a pilgrimage route. And it's a series of the same shape that sort of steps up in scale four times. It's like four little houses stuck together like a kind of Russian doll. And you enter at the smallest end and you arrive at the largest end, which is kind of the chapel space. And so it's really a sort of about a building up of excitement and tension and drama as you go from the most house-like bit to the most sort of chapel-like bit. The exterior of the building is clad in these ceramic tiles which depict Julie herself. We looked for a contemporary, really beautiful kind of mottled green Victorian tile. I think the project is very um, radical and, and interesting because of the way that it engages with a sort of popular culture and a, and a popular form of storytelling. I think that's incredibly unusual for architects to try to do that. In June 2016, the UK went to the polls to vote on its future as part of the European Union and in fact ended up voting to leave in what's now called Brexit. So we saw in a way the world of design intersecting with that in, its, in leaflets, in billboards and in the kind of paraphernalia that's always around any great big moment of polling. Pretty ordinary piece of campaign literature in some ways. It's a leaflet with some pages in it explaining why Britain's membership of the EU starves British institutions like the NHS of money and it's making a case that we should leave the EU. It was a bit of subterfuge, if you like. It's done in such a style as to emulate an NHS leaflet that for most people would not have realised that it did not come from the NHS, but instead it came from the Vote Leave campaign. What's quite interesting is the graphical use of statistics to create charts within the document, but the reality is those charts are provided without any context to understand what the facts in the charts mean, so anyone looking at those might come to an uninformed decision. I think that what we can learn from this object is to be far more vigilant, and secondly, to make sure that our copyright law is fit for purpose in this modern age of social media and fast printing and wide distribution of material. Rapid response collecting is part, I think, of an attempt by the V&A in general to root design and art history more in its social context again. And these objects have been in the public eye that have brought into focus big political or social issues through their design and through their objecthood. And we wanted to get those things into the museum within days, on display, and allow the public to have the debate in our walls. <laughs>